Hey everybody, welcome back to the Approved Cooking. So I haven't done a bread episode in a while, so I'm going to show you how to make focaccia bread today. It's super easy to make, and what's really cool about it is you can customize it with your own flavors to really make it your own. Really nothing more to say about it other than that. I mean, hey, it tastes amazing and it's easy. What more can you really ask? And that's why I'm going to show you how to make it, for those two reasons. So without any further ado, let's get into it and I'll show you how to make this. Okay, so let's start making this focaccia bread. What you're going to want to do is get yourself a measuring cup and put in one and a half cups of warm water. I had mine heated to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Then you're going to want to add in two and a quarter teaspoons of dry active yeast poured into the water. And then you're going to feed the hungry yeast with a tablespoon of honey. The sugar in the honey is what actually feeds the yeast. So mix that all together and set that aside for 10 minutes until the yeast starts to bloom. And you'll know it's blooming by it foaming up. Then get yourself a large mixing bowl like the one I have here. And you're going to want to put in three and three quarter cups of bread flour. Carefully pour that into the bowl. And then you're going to want to add in one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt and whisk that all together to make sure it is combined. Once it is combined, go get your watery, yeasty mixture. As you can see, you can tell the yeast is alive because it started to foam up. And pour that in with the flour and salt. Now, as you can see, a little bit of the honey stuck to the bottom, so just make sure you pour that out, like you spoon that out into the flour. And then you're going to want to mix this all together with your wooden spoon until it forms a shaggy dough. Once you don't see any dry flour left over, get yourself a quarter cup of olive oil and pour it in. Now what you'll want to do here is just start mixing it by hand, kneading this back and forth with the olive oil because it's going to work way easier than trying to mix it with a wooden spoon. Once it is all incorporated together, you can see it becomes pretty tacky, but that's okay, that's what you're looking for. So now we're going to cover this with plastic wrap and allow it to rise for the next couple hours. Typically it'll take two hours, but it could take a little bit less. You're looking for it to double in size. Now while it's rising, let's talk about what to cover the focaccia bread in. Typically it'll start off with a base of olive oil, so I'm using a quarter cup of olive oil in a measuring cup. And then you can add in whatever herbs you want. I'm going to start off with some garlic. I'm going to crush two cloves of garlic into the olive oil. As you can see, I'm mincing them in here and then putting them in with the olive oil. And then next, I'm going to use some fresh rosemary. As you can see here, I have a nice big sprig of it. So I'm just going to pull the leaves off of it, pull it down the stem like that. And then I'm going to break it up a little bit with my hands just so that the leaves are a little bit smaller. Put that in with the olive oil as well. And then I'm going to use some fresh thyme as well. Similar to the rosemary, just pull the leaves off by running your fingers down the stem and just put that in with the olive oil as well. Now what you will do then is stir this all together and you're going to let this sit for a couple of hours while the dough is rising because you want the olive oil to infuse with all of those nice spices and herbs. This will be just awesome when you put it on top of the focaccia bread. Okay, so it's been a couple of hours and as you can see the dough has clearly doubled in size. So uncover the plastic wrap and give it a little punch to deflate it. Now the plan from here is to fold the dough into itself four times, doing it in intervals of half an hour. So as you can see, I grabbed one side of it and I folded it into the middle and then I'm going to cover it back up with plastic wrap, wait half an hour and then do it with the next side. You're going to do this a total of four times, stretching and folding the dough into the center, and this is going to really help develop the gluten structure of the dough. So after the fourth fold, go get yourself a 9 by 13 inch baking pan. I have this lasagna pan here I'm using, and generously coat the bottom with olive oil so that the dough doesn't stick to it when you're baking it. As you can see, I used a couple of tablespoons of olive oil, and I'm just running my hands over the bottom to make sure it's covered. From there, extricate the dough and place it into the baking pan and try and stretch it out towards the edges of it. You'll notice the dough is going to fight you. It's not going to stretch out all the way. That's because the glutens need time to relax. So cover with a tea towel or plastic wrap and set in a warm, dry place for about half an hour to give the glutens time to relax. So after 30 minutes, we'll try it again. We'll keep stretching out the dough. And as you can see, it's much easier to stretch out this time because you want to make sure this gets all the way to the edge of the pan. And once it has been stretched out, you're going to take your hands and then just start poking a literal ton of dimples into this dough. 
as you can see here there is just tons of them you just keep poking dimples into it because that's what's going to give the focaccia bread its shape and look at that's what it looks like so from there go get your olive oil and start coating the dough completely in it. You want to make sure it's nice and coated over the top. Now as you can see here some of the rosemary leaves were still not quite broken up to my standard so if that's the case you can break them up a little bit more. But there you go that's the focaccia dough. So preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes until it comes out golden brown and gorgeous looking like this. Man that looks good. All right, so get yourself your offset spatula and run it along all the edges of the pan to make sure that you detach the bread from the pan. And then you're going to get yourself a large metal spatula and pull it out of the pan. Pretty simple, right? Now I'm setting it on a wire rack like so, and I'm gonna let it cool down for about 10 to 15 minutes until I cut into this. But like, seriously, look at how gorgeous that looks. It is picturesque, man. Oh, that looks so good. And the smells coming off of it are just amazing. Oh my God, I can't wait to cut into this. So it's been about 15 minutes and we're gonna cut into this. So use a bread knife and then just cut yourself off a piece. Oh, I, like I said, I am really, really excited to cut into this. It just smells so good. So here we go, taking a corner piece. Look at the crumb on that. Look at the nice bubbles on the inside. Oh man, that texture is amazing. And let me tell you what, that is so good. That is so good. It is nice and fluffy, but crunchy on the outside, but the insides are nice and fluffy. And it's just, the spices on it are amazing. The rosemary, garlic, and thyme are just so perfect on it. It is honestly so good. And this was so easy to make, guys. Like, this was just so, so freaking good. Like, let's give you a close-up here. You see all the rosemary and the thyme and the garlic and just another shot of the crumb on the inside. It is just perfectly fluffy. Oh, it is so good. You should really try making this at home because, as you can see, it was super easy to make. Like, this was not hard at all to make, and it is so, so good. But anyways, that's the end of the episode. I hope you like what you saw here today. If you did, why don't you drop me a comment, like the video, or even subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching Idiot Proof Cooking. We'll see you again soon.